Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Mindful Muslima. The topic we're going to talk about today has been highly requested. Toddler tantrums. Oh my goodness. If you're a mom who's had a child under the age of four, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. These tantrums are not only um, stressful, but they're also embarrassing if they happen outside. So many moms are upset and don't know how to handle them and are struggling, especially if you have multiple children. It can be just a mess. No worries. Today we're going to talk about why they happen and how we can handle them in a way that is more aligned with the Sunnah, the positive and gentle parenting approach. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start off with is the way that we perceive tantrums. Now, mostly we look at them as a means of defiance. And unfortunately, when we look at it that way, it makes the situation extremely personal. But in fact, that's not what's really happening. What's happening instead is that it's a situation where we have a little person who's not able to handle their big emotions. Now these big emotions have become just too much for them to handle and what they really need from us are effective tools in how to manage the things that they are feeling. And they need these instead of being punished for something that they biologically cannot control. And what I'm about to tell you has been life-changing, mind-blowing even, because I realized that I was almost demonizing my child the same way that other parents do, when actually something else is happening. It's just a matter of shifting our perspective and shifting our reaction. But don't worry, I'm gonna share that with you today, and I hope it can do the same thing for you as it did for me. Now, as a mother, I wasn't always taught of this way of looking at toddler tantrums. Um, a long time back, I was studying child development back when I was in university, and I stumbled across things that were astounding and I found a better way to handle my child when they are in that emotional state and I want to bring that to you. And so as I was reading, one of the first things I learned is that science tells us that the children's or our children's inability to cope actually stems from the underdeveloped prefrontal cortex. Now, if you're not familiar with the prefrontal cortex, that's where we deal with the emotional and social uh, feelings that we have. But yeah, that's right. The brain in that area is actually underdeveloped. We're getting upset at our children for not even having the biological capacity to handle those emotions. It's actually not even their fault. SubhanAllah. We assume that they should be able to just get it together when actually in effect of they're biologically incapable. Me learning this was just mind blowing and I realized how cruel of an approach it was for me to expect things of them that they actually had physical limitations for. And just to, to make it even more clear, when our child is going through that emotion, what happens is in their lower brain, they call it the reptilian brain, they're going into this panic or this fight or flight. You might have heard that in psychology class, but you didn't quite remember what it's for. <laughs> fight or flight mode. So they're responding in a certain way. And I mean, I'm going to be honest, not even children only experience this. Sometimes it's adults. Adults have emotions that are overwhelming. They scream, they lash out at people. They might not be kicking and screaming on the floor, but they're certainly not handling their emotions well. So, I mean, we're upset with toddlers, but I could see that if there are some older people that don't get a grip at this at a young age, it can definitely follow them into adulthood. And I do want to point out here that what is big to us and what's big to a child might be different. So if a child gets a toy taken away, for us it's something frivolous and silly, it's just a toy. But for them sometimes it's their whole world. We forget, guys, that their perception of the world is different than our We've seen a lot more. We've heard a lot more. We've experienced a lot more. Their worldview is very much like tunnel vision. They can only see right in front of them like the basic needs because they're still at an underdeveloped age. So they think of the things like food, water, mommy, comfort, safety. You know, the, the couple little things in their life that exist are super important to them. If like a thing of Legos breaks, it's earth shattering. It's if like somebody hit her car. To them, it's super huge. So we can't undermine their experience and their emotions. Okay, so now that we know this, what can we do? Goodness, what can we do to respond in the appropriate manner? So there's three things that we're going to do. I'm going to walk you through the steps, and if you stay to the end, I'm going to give you an exact example of exactly what that might look like with a child. So the first thing we're going to do is probably the last thing we want to do, which is to, drum roll, empathize. So your child is on the floor in the kitchen screaming that they want a cookie before dinner. You've told them 10 times that it's not appropriate, you have to eat dinner first, and you have to have the cookie. So they're screaming and screaming and kicking on the floor and all you're thinking in your head is, 
not empathy that I could tell you that, right? Empathy is not the first thing in your mind. You're not thinking of, oh, poor baby. You're just thinking of like all the things you want to say to them that you're trying to hold back from saying. So why do we have to empathize first? It is a must. You have to empathize first. And because we don't do that, usually that's why we're struggling and struggling to reach the child. Now, I do want to throw in here that some parents think that empathizing is being passive or allowing the child to walk all over you. Again, that is the old way of looking at it because we are looking at it as defiance. It is not defiance, guys. They are biologically incapable of handling their emotions. And so it's really, really cruel for us to expect that they could and then punish them for it by being um, you know, less than kind. So the truth is, if we had a person who was disabled next to us, we had a person next to us who is, who is incapable of, of doing something physically, we would all jump to help them. We wouldn't consider them defying us by not, let's say, walking or not reading and they're blind. So I know these are, these are you know, not precise examples, but really these are the equivalent of our um, lack of empathy and our lack of kindness. Okay, so let's explain why empathy is the key to shocking your child, shocking them in a good way, pulling them out of their negative emotional state. It's actually a, a way to get a trigger going. So let me explain to you why. Scientifically, when we have a negative response, a reactionary response, a, a negative feeling, even for adults, it happens in our lower brain. Our lower brain is the reactionary brain. So if our child is not given a trigger of a way to come out of that part of the brain, they're gonna stay there and they're gonna stay in their tantrum. Even as adults, if you ever felt super angry, like somebody cut you off on the road and you just wanna like lash out at somebody, that's from your reptilian brain. That's actually from your lower brain. And you might have heard some ayat of Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he's going to grab them by their forelock. This is where the logic is happening or not happening, right? So it depends on where we are in this situation. So the reptilian brain is the lower brain and that's the part where we're extremely reactive, not thinking, not using logic, patience, or empathy or anything like that. And it's actually a very negative state. Um, physically or Islamically. So how do we get them to listen? We empathize. What does that sound like? It sounds something like, oh, sweetheart, you can't have the cookie. I'm so sorry. I can't imagine how you must feel. I know sometimes I want something and I'm not able to have it, okay? We have to first explain that we have acknowledged their pain. We have to acknowledge their pain and state what it is. Oh, you wanted that and you couldn't have it? I'm so sorry. But guys, the trick is you cannot do it with any type of sarcasm. And I know some moms are gonna be like, finding like gritting their teeth saying it but you can't do it with any type of sarcasm and so empathy here is the medicine and I will inject here that prophet peace be upon him did use this method and this was his method because when he when he saw a child that was upset or hurting and there are certain instances in the sunnah where they've talked about this he would go to the child he would get down to their level, and this is what they talk about in psychology, and this is 400, 1400 years prior, to go down on the level, say on like the knees, he would be at the eye level of the child, he would put his hand lovingly on the child's shoulder, let's say, and he would, he would do that, the whole act of empathy with them. Oh, I'm sorry, what's wrong? And so like he would just instantly come down, see that they needed to be embraced. And think about it, guys, as adults. Let's say you're having a super hard day uh, with your husband, and you go to work, and you have these, or, you know, these horrible feelings, or you had a fight with your mom, or you had a fight with your sister or girlfriend, or somebody said something hurtful to you, and then you go to work. And then you, you know, you're struggling at work, and you're feeling frustrated. Uh, the last thing you want somebody to do is to come to you and lash out at you and tell you what you should be doing. You know what you should be doing doing but you can't do it right now because you're overwhelmed and we have a developed brain I just want to say the kids don't but we do and we still struggle do we not so what would help you to calm down maybe if you went home and your spouse saw your face coming home from work and they were like you look like you had a hard day come give me a hug right that would make us <sighs> Melt. Maybe if it's not your spouse, maybe it's somebody else. Maybe it's a you know a other relative like your mom or your sister or something like that. But the point is, we need somebody to say, "I'm so sorry that happened to you." It makes us melt, guys. It makes us go from that part of our brain to the other part of our brain that's ready to listen. Okay. So after we've empathized, the second part is number two is we have to explain the boundaries to the child. So it might sound something like this: We don't hit in our house. Hitting is not allowed in our house. Lying is not allowed in our house, even if we're upset. 
whatever it is, you just say the rule. You don't say it with anger, you don't say it with sarcasm, and you don't act very miskeen like you're struggling to even say it. You know, you're not hurting your child. You're hurting your child when you don't teach the child. You're hurting your child when you respond in a way that is inappropriate for their level of development, their, their physical, mental, emotional, social development. So this is the appropriate response. Empathy, and then, stating in a very like monotone firm way but we don't hit in this house it's not happening it's not allowed even we're upset there are other ways to handle that now the last part is the critical part guys because we have to guide our children we are facilitators we are guiders we are we are molders we are helpers we're teachers we have to actually sometimes to allow the child to get kind of like closure we have to give them a tool to express themselves so it might be writing it out or drawing it out so for example um we might say okay i'm so sorry you felt that way but we're not going to hit in this house or we're not going to scream and kick in this house but i would love if you would come over here and take a piece of paper and you can draw for me what you're feeling if you can draw for me what you think happened and we could talk more about it so when you send them over and obviously if they're a toddler they're going to probably just mostly draw and they might scribble nonsense, guys, and you can't even understand what it is. But they, it, it means something to them. They totally understand their pictures. And if you've had children, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so then when they come back to you and they give you the piece of paper and you're looking at it, you're not quite sure what it is, but you're like, oh, wow, what's happening in this picture? Can you explain it to me? And they're gonna say, yeah, this is where I'm upset, and this is where the cookies are on the counter, and I was looking at the cookies, and I wanted to have the cookies, but here's you. <laughs> they might explain the whole situation. You're like, wow, I totally understand. The point is, guys, by the time they've done all this you've done this and calmed them down the whole goal of this was to take them out of the reptilian brain get them to a place where they could listen and calm them down this is not a timeout we're not doing any of that because again we're not punishing them for things they can't control so in the house this is what we can do after we've done this exercise what we've done is we've effectively helped the child to come out of their reactive brain into a place where they actually listen to us and again we're going to talk in child appropriate words and tones and believe me you're going to see that they went from being here in emotion all the way down the point is to diffuse the situation in an age appropriate manner i hope this was super helpful for you guys if you have any other suggestions comments or questions please leave them down below also share this with a sister please share guys there are sisters struggling out there with toddler tantrums. Share this with your sister that you love and want to help, and I'll see you in the next one. Assalamualaikum.